good afternoon guys hope everything is fine you are all of you are enjoying your le lectures and your studies and your journey with health and safety and we have started element one yesterday and we covered the past two elements i just uh, re quickly revise the main items of first two elements the first two units one very important thing is roles and response uh, is the uh, legal is the reasons for maintaining health and safety standards at workplace. And we discuss about three reasons, moral, legal, and financial reasons. That is very important question. And then other we discuss barriers to good standards, why good standards are not being followed. And also we have discussed what are the consequences if standards are not being implemented, what gone wrong, what will happen to the organizations. There are many, many problems type of cost, insured, uninsured, accident, direct cost, indirect cost. We discussed this one yesterday. So these two, three points are very valid as per exam point of view. Today, we are going to learn about roles of national government and international bodies. So let's we continue our element 1.3. Here we will study about uh, ILO. This word ILO, International Labor Organization, it will be repeated now many times. So inter International Labor Organization, what is this? It's an agency of United Nations. Most of the countries in the world are member of ILO. ILO set international standards for health and safety by publishing conventions recommendations. Here a point of focus by publishing conventions and recommendations. These are the two main items. You will find in the next slides, in the next lecture, you will find C155. If it comes with C, it means it's convention 155. And you may find R164. That will be indicating recommendation 164. So in the world, most of the countries are member of international labor organizations. And any member of labor organization have to follow the standards which they set for health and safety. How they set, they give guidelines by conventions and then they explain further the guidelines by recommendations. So international framework in, as we discuss conventions and recommendations in convention, they create binding obligations or policies to implement their provisions. No legal authority unless ratified by the members state into its own legal structure and recommendation provide guidance on policy, legislation, and practice. So in simple words, if I, I, I explain in front of you, when they set a policy, they set some target and they give some responsibilities to employer, to employees in generic form, in general way that is coming in conventions. And when they explain, they elaborate it further, they explain it properly and in more explanation way that how to implement on the site how it can be implemented, what will be the benefits, and if not implemented or if not followed, what are the consequences? That is coming in recommendation. So if you find C-155, it must come into your mind. It's convention 155. And if you have seen R-164, it means it's recommendation 164. So examples are regulatory international framework. Uh, although this question is not coming as much like as in uh, exam, but it's a part of your syllabus. You need to know about that and it can come in exam as well. Regulations adopted by the International Labor Organization, Occupational Safety and Health Convention. This is only example C1455. There is a convention held in uh, International Labor Organization named Convention 155, a goal-setting policy for companies and nations. In C-155, they set a policy for companies, for the nations, like how they have to follow health and safety. And then R-164, which even happened in 1981. It supplements C-155 and gives more guidance on how to comply with the policies. In C-155, they develop and set and publish the policy as Convention 155, and in recommendation 164, R164, they explain, they elaborate how it will be implemented. 
So employer's responsibility is also very valid point as per exam point of view as well. And also in the field, when you guys started your uh, career in health, health and safety, you need to know about that. You have to uh, be adequate, aware about this. So article 16 of 155 identifies obligations placed on employer too. As we have discussed yesterday, the safety is responsibility of everyone, but ILO put more responsibility towards employer. They make the employer accountable for more items than the employees or than the managers. So we have discussed yesterday, the employer have to uh, ensure that the workplace machinery, equipment and work process are safe and without risk to health. They have to ensure that chemicals, physical and biological substances and agents are without risk to health when protective measures have been taken. They need to ensure that they have provided protective clothing and equipment to prevent risk of accidents or adverse health effects. So <clears throat> I will explain these three points in front of you in some simple language for your better understanding. So the employer, the organization, it's the responsibility of the organization that they must provide safe place of work, safe plant and equipment. What is mean by safe plant and equipment means the plant and equipments are of good company, inspected properly, maintained properly. There is maintenance record. There is competent person who maintain and inspect this one. And they have to give training to the workers like how to use these tools and equipments. For example, there is one machine known as excavator. Excavator is being used to dig. It's used to make the trenches and excavate the soil. But somehow what is happening, they are not inspected. There is no not appropriate lubrication. The tools uh, and some parts are damaged. Maybe the mirrors, the glasses are damaged. The visibility is low because of not maintenance or improper cleaning or the cabin of the operator covered with the curtain. So many reasons. So this is the responsibility of the employer that they must find good equipment and then they have to ensure that the equipment is in a safe condition. So the next is ensure chemical, physical, and biological substances. Yeah, as I discussed yesterday, as we discussed yesterday, we need to have basic knowledge of physics, chemistry, and biology. Why? Because we are dealing with chemicals. As you can see in the pictures, now it's COVID time. Alhamdulillah, the COVID is finished now, but we face a lot. We suffer a lot with COVID. So we need to ensure that adequate measures have been taken, like, for example, for COVID-19, need to have adequate number of hand sanitizers, gloves, all other accessories like face masks, social distances. These are the responsibilities of the employer that they must educate his workers, his employees, and he must take appropriate provisions. Hello, everyone. Uh, yes, please. Hello, everyone. Hello, sir. How are you? Uh, I'm good. Hello. You cannot hear? Uh, no, no, I can hear. I can hear. Everything is clear. Yes. Please carry on. Sorry to disturb in the class. Uh, okay, no problem. So the other thing is provide adequate protective clothing, yeah, PPE, personal protective equipment and other tools and equipments to keep the personals and the individuals from health hazards or the risk to their health, like hand gloves, head caps, eye protection face protection, all these things, it's the responsibility of the employer to provide to the workers. Furthermore, provide and maintain workplace. Yeah, they need to ensure that the workplace is well maintained. They need to provide instructions, training, and supervision to the workers. But about instructions, instructions means how to perform this job, the methodology to do a task. For example, in a pro uh, production unit of a construction field, there is a steel fabrication yard. So the employer, they have to ensure that the supervisor or the site engineer or the responsible person have given adequate training to the workers how to unload, how to cut the steel, how to bend the steel, how to store the steel. All these instructions and trainings need to be given. And then the employer have to ensure that a competent person who is competent, who is having adequate or sufficient experience in the same field, he is supervising the workers so that he can 
inform the workers he can educate the workers what they have to do then give necessary instructions introduce organizational arrangements uh, arrangements relevant to activities and size of undertaking yeah they need to ensure that everything in the perfect manner whatever the size of the work and whatever the size of the uh, plant and equipment tools materials everything they need to take care in the workplace in general manners provide pp and clothing without charge yeah employer's responsibility to provide free of cost pp to the employees i am here in uae in uae there is a federal law number eight federal law number eight implemented on the employers that they need to provide personal protective equipment to the workers without any cost ensure that the work organizations particularly working hours and rest breaks does not adversely affect occupational safety and health you need to give frequent breaks as per the work condition, if it's a confined space, maybe they need to have a break after 15 minutes. If it's a hot work, they need to have a break after 15 minutes as well. Like as per the task and as per the activity, they need to ensure that, <coughs> sorry, people are taking regular breaks. Take reasonable uh, practical measures with the view of eliminating excessive physical and mental fatigue. Yeah, they, they must not put too much work pressure on the workers. They must not give big tasks which cannot be done easily so they need to take care and they need to keep update of scientific techniques and knowledge to comply with the above yeah the scientific knowledge they need to update they need to have adequate idea they need to be vigilant and uh, sorry they need to keep the workers update about the changes like maybe there is a new technology or new machine which can make the work so easy so fast and hazards free new technologies, modern technologies, they need to keep the workers update. Okay, regulatory framework. For example, ILO has also published conventions associated with specific hazard. They published one convention named as C-155 in 1960. It's about radiation protection. They published convention 162 in 1986 asbestos. So only in 1986, asbestos was identified as a health hazard. C-167, health and safety in construction, it was published in 1988. What employer must provide? Safe place of work, safe plant and equipment. We have discussed this many times already. Training, supervision, safe system of work. And what is competence? Competence is a knowledge, is a combination of four words or four items. K for knowledge, A for ability, T for training, and E for experience. Let's discuss it in more detail. What about knowledge? I am a trainer for Nibosh. So if I need to be a competent or if I am a competent, I must have knowledge about Nibosh. Maybe I have knowledge about finance, but then I will not be competent for Nibosh or for health and safety. Then ability, ability to deliver, ability to perform the task, what is ability? Ability means you have adequate strength, mental, physical, to perform that job. Training, you must have training about that job. Like if I am a trainer, I must have adequate experience and training how to deliver the courses. For example, I did one course, train the trainers, which give me training and Ayosh gave me training that how I need to set a classroom, how I need to arrange with my student, how I need to let them understand what I am telling them. Then experience. If I just pass my Nibosh certification and I start giving training, it, it will not be beneficial. It will not be effective because I don't have experience about that. So once you have knowledge about specific task, ability to do that job and training in the same aspect and experience of the same job. Previously, you have done some project and you have done work at height means you have experience, then only you can be a competent person. So this is the definition of competence. Here is a group activity apart from employees. Who else must employer protect? Yeah, the employer, he is responsible to protect his employees, but other than employees, who he need to protect? It's a very common question, very simple, but it need to be understand. And it's an important question for exam also. Number one, the visitors people's working around or living around the project or the workplace, they need to be protected. The kids, maybe they start playing and they fall down in your trenches, excavations, or maybe they get hit 
or get hurt by some of the tools and equipment or maybe they come in contact with some chemical you need to protect. Then the other interesting party is trespassers. The people who are coming with bad intention, they come into your workplace to take something, some thief, to stole something, to steal something. So these people also we need to take care of. Anyone, visitors, invited or uninvited, uninvited people, uh, visitors means the trespassers. Lawful, unlawful, some people are coming with a purpose, but some people are coming only to take the cable wire in the night. So we need to take care of them, contractors, mentor, members of the public. So employer or the organization must take care of all of this. Here is another point. Uh, Rania, yes, any question? Uh, Rania, you are raising hand. Any question? Okay. Assalamu alaikum, sir. No, By no. mistake, I think. I uh, just no got pressed. No problem. Oh no okay. <laughs> so what are the responsibilities of the workers? Let's explain it in detail and it will help you a lot in your field work. Article 19 of Convention 165 also replace also places obligations on workers expanded in R164, like recommendation one recommendation 164, like take reasonable care of their own safety and the of others, comply with the safety instructions and procedures, use all safety equipment properly, report any situation which they believe could be a hazard and which they cannot fix themselves. Report any work-related accident or ill health. So these are the basic responsibilities of the workers. Being a worker, I have to take care of myself. I must not do any act. Like I must not put fire anywhere. I must not use a tool which is unsafe. I must not use some chemical if I am not trained for that. I must take care about myself and about the others because I must not put myself in a dangerous condition and others as well. Then I have to comply with the safety instructions. So what are the instructions? When anybody visiting or joining a project as a visitor or as a worker, a safety induction being given to them, like how to work, where to work, work under the supervisor, all safety guidelines, what is the emergency contact number, where is the rest area, where are the welfare facilities available. So all information and instructions are given to them. So the worker have to comply with all. So he have to use all safety equipments provided to him properly. He must report any situation which he feel that it's dangerous, it's hazardous. Something can be wrong. Someone can get hurt from that. He must report. And he must report any incident or accident which happened on the workplace. For example, like in the month of April, the question came in the Nibosh exam. A person, he get injured in the workplace and an other co-worker also noticed him, that he got injured, but both kept silent. So means both are guilty and both are faulty. The person who got injured, it's his responsibility to inform to the supervisor, to the direct line manager, to the medical team, first aiders, project management, workplace managers, and the person who witnessed, who noticed that he got hurt, he got injured in the workplace. It's also his responsibility to give adequate so what are the rights of the worker? Yeah. As in Convention 155, there are some responsibilities. There are some rights. Given adequate information on actions the employer has taken to ensure oh, okay. and health. And guys, please mute your mic. So the worker have right that he must be given adequate information what the organization or what the employer is taking care for them. What are the actions are being taken to take care of the safety of the employees? Given the right to necessary training, yeah, he have the right to get necessary training for his work. Like, I am engaged in a confined space work, so I have the right to get training for confined space. Uh, consulted by the employer on all matters, yeah, the organization or the employer must discuss everything with the workers which is relating to their health and safety at workplace. Given the right to leave workplace, which he has reason to think presents an immense and serious danger. If a worker, if a worker feels that this situation or this workplace condition is not safe, 
he have the right to leave the workplace immediately. So next is enforcement agencies. No harmonized global standard. There is no global standard for all countries or for each country or for each organization. As I discussed uh, earlier, in UAE, we have OSHAD, we have UAE federal laws. In Saudi Arabia, you have Saudi laws and then Aramco is there. In the UK and USA, there is OSHA standards. They need to follow. So every country have their own standards to follow for health and safety. So country specific agencies may include health and safety enforcement agency, fire authority, civil defense, insurance companies, police may be involved in enforcing health and safety laws in some countries. In Pakistan and also in UAE or Qatar, which I have witnessed that the municipality, the government departments, they have their representatives. They are visiting the workplace. They are visiting the projects. And they, if they found that adequate care has not been taken for the employees, they have right to find the organization. They have right to punish the organization. They have right to take back the project. So this is the role of enforcement agencies. It differs, it, it, it differs from country to country. Then uh, we have consequences of non-compliances. Breach of health and safety legislation is usually a criminal offense. Yeah. If someone bypass or breach the health and safety standard, it's a criminal act and it can lead to improvement or prohibition notice. Enforcement action are of two types. One is improvement. Like if it's something minor, it can be improved. So the organization or the relevant authority, they are giving or they are issuing an improvement notice to the organization. And if it's critical, it's life-threatening, it's much hazardous, what they will do, they will issue a prohibition notice and the workplace will be stopped, seized immediately. There should be no work in any case until the rectification and then the organization have to call for re-inspection. Once the authority representative inspect the workplace, then only he allowed to start the operation. So prosecution is uh, organizations may be fined. Yeah, as an uh, action, they can fine the organization. They can ban the organization and maybe they take someone to jail. If they found individuals are doing some big mistake, jail can be uh, <clears throat> recommended for them. So claim for compensations. Fault-based compensation system. This is a system which it's not relevant to our exam, but as a safety representative or as a safety professional, you must know about that. Workers bring claims against employer. When someone get hurt, get injured, or any problem or any say, illness <clears throat> happen to a worker, have, he bring a case, he put a case in the court against the employer. It's a civil legal system. It must prove employer was negligent. So the worker or the person who is complaining, he have to prove. He need to show the evidence, audio, video, pictures that the employer didn't take care. That's why it happened with us. This system is mostly implemented in UK and USA. Claim for compensation in a no-fault system. Like here, you don't need to prove that the employer is faulty. If something happened to the workers, employer have to pay. He have no choice. That is fixed and final. That if something happened in the workplace, employer have to pay. Actually, this the similar system is being implemented in UAE. In the workplace, if something happened, the blood money, royalty, graduate, sick payment, insurance, many things need to be paid by the employer. It's by national or regional schemes. No need to prove negligence. Decide by a panel of experts. No liars or court. New Zealand and Sweden are the most uh, favorable or are the examples of this system. Discuss the criminal and civil impl law implications in the following. A technician escapes injury by diving under the bench when a vessel blows up and a result of design defect. Yeah, there is a design defect. The design of the vessel or design of the blower was not safe. It was designed in unsafe manners and a technician get hurt. So what will happen? So guys, these are the four points. You need to read it. And uh, I recommend you to write down your answer and send me in WhatsApp. 
no need to send in group you can send in group as well but you can send in personal if you feel that uh, your answer is not good and maybe some other one someone will laugh on you no need to think about that you can send to me directly or just keep it prepared with you it will help you a lot in your exam Okay, other international standards, international organization for standardization, ISO 19001, they are dealing with quality management. It's an international standard. It's not a law. Just make your mind clear on that. This is a standard, ISO 9001. It's a standard which set the quality, how to deliver the quality products from the workplace or from the manufacturing unit, but it's not a law. ISO 14001 for environmental, ISO 20100 for safety of machinery, and ISO 45001, it's not mentioned here, it's for health and safety. It's like lead auditor for health and safety. He need to be certified from ISO in 45001. The standards are not law. They are good management practices or best industrial practices. So internationally recognized standard for health and safety, OSAS 18001. Now there is no OSAS 18001. This one has been replaced with ISO 45001. Uh, compatible with ISO 9001 and ISO 14001. Okay, source of information. When you are in the workplace or an organization, you are a worker, you are a manager, or you are employed. What are the source of uh, information? One is internal, the other is external. What is the inter uh, internal? Accident records. In the organization, how many accidents happened in one year? A record of the accidents, it's internal source of information. Medical reports, how many people get busted? How many people get sick because of work? The risk assessment, maintenance reports of tools and equipment, safety inspections, audit reports, these all are internal sources of information. The external is national legislation. Government put some, uh, publish some uh, legislation. They publish some court order or the ministerial degree. Safety data sheet, which is coming with the material. When we receive any material from manufacturer, MSDS or SDS safety data sheet is coming. Code of practices like here in Oshad, now we have code of practices which give adequate information about all the sectors in uh, construction and uh, in Aramco in Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Aramco, there is general instructions known as GI about the particular topics or particular <laughs> events. Operating instructions, trade associates, safety publications like IOSH, NIBOSH, uh, BCSP, other authorities or other relevant safety institutes, they are publishing their experiences. Source organizations where you can get data about so safety these are some not all some of the websites from where you can get adequate data adequate uh, information about safety standards from all these websites you can download and you can learn about safety standards so here are the end of section quiz what are the two main standards that ILO has produced for health and safety what are employees' responsibility under 164? What are the employees' responsibility under 164? What action could be taken against organization breaking health and safety law? So these are the four questions. Very important. Answers already given to you. So you guys have to go through these questions, read them properly, and try to answer them. Try to write the answer of each question. Do not copy from the book, but try to answer the all the questions. So guys, I just stop my screen share. So for, from today's lesson, anybody have any problem, any doubt, anything? Everyone is silent. Clear, clear. <laughs> okay, okay. So is it okay with all of you? Yes. Okay, guys, again, if anybody uh, have any doubt, any problem, so you can ask me, you can ask in the group, you can ask during the session. So I am here to clear them. Tomorrow we will start our element two. I recommend you to study the <laughs> element two. You have already have the slides, the presentation, and the study material with you. So read the element two before we start. 
लिमिटेड एक्सेस a small place you cannot stay there more and you need special permits and procedures for example just a simple example is boilers vessels shafts of the lift you are going to the malls and supermarket and you found that a lift is moving there to take the people's up and down you know it's very limited access and in the main holes like if we talk about sewage main holes they are deep like 10 meters there is only very small 60 by 60 cm opening people have to go inside and have to do some operation some lamination some cleaning some other activities relating to the construction so confined space is a place which have limited access and required special consideration for work and people's need training specific training about confined space like if you are sitting in a room which have only very small access you don't have appropriate uh, ventilation you don't have appropriate lighting it's coming under the confined space the vessels the boilers the marine safety the oil rig when they are doing rigging there are some parts or some shafts which you are isolated you are away from the others you are away from the basic facilities and it needs special care and special <clears throat> instruction for that that is a confined space uh, is it clear uh, also sir in confined space there is no, no stay for a long time uh, sorry where in confined space you are not stay yes, yes, for a long time stay. you can it's for limited time work maybe 15 minutes yes. it depends upon the type of confined space yes yeah or, according, or, or, yeah, or on the condition the and the type of the work the management or the risk assessment risk management team they are deciding how many minutes you will stay and after how many stay you have to go out of the confined space there need gas testing regular so that you know about the oxygen level and the presence of other gases there can be flooding there are a lot of hazards associated with confined space in construction field especially infrastructure and building confined space is a major hazard which we are facing uh, is it clear yes Yes, sir. It's clear. I already mentioned yeah, that okay. I got it. Actually, I'm happy if anybody ask any question. Yes, sir. Uh, so what? So what stand for RAM? Sorry. RAM, RAM, R A M, like M S D S. Same like RAM, R A M, risk analysis something. see it's it's different in different organization it's not in international standard it's a risk assessment methodology what we use here risk assessment methodology like like which method we use to assess the risk it it can be different in different organizations what i have read in oshad and what i have read in the general instructions of aramco there are different terms being used it's not something international it's a local generated term SDS or okay. MSDS is international. Anywhere in the world you mention MSDS, it means Material Safety Data Sheet or the Safety Data Sheet. Okay. Okay, guys. So our session is also going to expire in one minute. So take care of yourself. Try to read and understand the questions. Tomorrow we will start, and tomorrow we will finish also the element two. Best pray for me on Saturday. I have I have interview as a safety supervisor. Ah, uh, okay. Best of luck for your interview. Inshallah. Have a good day, guys. Take care. Bye bye. Okay. Assalamualaikum.